What's up guys? This is the Roverman and I am back to bring you to the next episode of my Empire Total War. Let's play as the Spanish Empire. So to pick up where we left off, we have destroyed the Austrians in Central Europe and so many of our armies are now just surging east to take advantage of the significant lack of strength on the part of the Russians who are sieging Moscow, Vilnius and Riga. But first, we must take their capital and bring it into the fold. As you can see, it's not an army that should cause us much difficulty, a significant militia component which, will, which we will heavily exploit. They have no defences, so we will push in and destroy them, then rebuild their grand city in our image. There will not be a, uh, there will not be a, an opportunity for any nearby forces to provide any support. Moscow will fall and it will become the jewel in our eastern empire. And then that will be well soon that will be that will be almost the entire strength of the russian faction gone really they haven't i think once they lose moscow once they lose moscow and vilnius the last city they've actually got to hold which is a major city is st petersburg and we're on our way so let's push up aggressively with with strength of purpose to destroy the garrison so get our howitzers working on the troops at the front with my line cavalry push them up because they'll have something to say to those dragoons no doubt Yeah, they're firing carcass shot back at me. Who do they think they are? Dragoons, Vibioni, Strozzi. See, I'm learning to like line cavalry. So bring them forward, put a volley into those dragoons. Draw to reload. Our line infantry can advance. There's militia pushing up the flank. They don't, they don't look bad for militia. I didn't even, didn't even see that cavalry charge on the flank. Aha, you did though. Deploy my, my grenadiers into square, deploy you guys into square just in case they try to pick new targets. Whoops. Shot a bunch of my own regiment of horse. Cavalry are gone. Will not be long till these, this militia has been pushed back. Yeah, my infantry is drilled hard just for an engagement such as this. These militia are going down. Good old line cavalry. How much ammunition have you got? 16 compared to... So in theory you've got... Well, you've got more than a line infantry unit. So you can just sit here just pouring mass volleys into the enemy. That's quite good. So we can ignore the troops behind cover for now. Well, actually, we can take a howitzer unit, attack ground just shy. And they will start to uh, thin them out. Regiment of horse. The European infantry mercenaries have lost a lot of men. Push up that unit of infantry because I think there's a bit of a, yeah, there's a terrain issue here. You men cease and reload. The militia have gone. The uh, the melee militia have gone. Their infantry that's advanced up to our front line is going is going to break. 
fire it at will at that, at that regiment of horse. That should thin the... Thin the... Uh, thin them out somewhat. Oh, that poor regiment of militia marching into this absolute maelstrom. Poor, poor souls. I did line, turn my line cavalry firewall off. Yes, I did. Artillery shoot at the light horse that's just currently running around in the rear. Their entire army has now broken. Except for that one unit that's currently sat in the <laughs> dug in position. Keep bombarding them with round shot. Some men must be sacrificed for their greater good. My line cavalry charge into the mercenaries, my regiment of horse push around the flank. Are they ready to fire a volley before they even get there? Doesn't look like it. Fire it well off just to stop them from doing anything too dangerous. Get my engineers in there to take out the mortar crews. Yeah, the 17th Regiment. <laughs> yeah, there we go, they're shattered. The cavalry are not long for this world. You don't need to take them out, but I'm going to do it to try and farm some kills. You go after that line infantry, you go after the Fusiliers. The 12th Regiment of Fusiliers. You men also all charge the Cossacks. Oh, the Cossacks have routed. Form up. And then let's ceasefire all artillery. Because that's everyone. We're going to continue. Just to try and get the experience of some of my units a bit further up. I don't think my general is going to have too much for all to play. I am aware of those stakes. Yeah, they can knock out this unit of mercenaries at least. Not that it'll matter, because it's a city action. But any chance to increase their experience level would be hand will be handy. Yeah, we'll go after this last mortar crew, because the last guys to escape are these this infantry over here. Decisive victory for us indeed. So that is Moscow taken, no doubt the Russians will not take that too kindly. Especially we don't have any money, but I think if we knock down the modern university, that will that will be enough, actually, on both counts. Um, and because I forgot I had no money, I might not actually take these territories yet. I might actually end turn. Nizhny, yeah, we're getting rid of you. Yeah, let's end turn just to get um out just to get more troops up to the front line and to get some have some money in the bank so I can take those three territories and immediately put them to uh, some sort of work by taking or by being able to repair the buildings in the territory plus upgrading and replacing churches and so on. Yeah, we have an infrastructure problem across our central empire, but that's what happens when we've got a limited number of... Um, oh, there we go. The Russian... I mean, yeah, it's risky. <laughs> Hooray, they've taken one of my ports. One of my trade nodes. But we're in that part of the game where I'm desperately trying to transition from a trade-based economy to a tax-based economy and to be honest I own almost all of Europe so I think that's going to go pretty well. 
that's part of the reason why road upgrades and industry upgrades are so important now because it means that any sneak attacks against my trade zones can be can be ignored fundamentally oh you're pushing towards kiev but not our, <laughs> our lack of infrastructure is counting against you there ah. Ooh, do I want to draw them into an action? I think I kind of have to. I think I kind of have to. Let's swap the infantry around. I do. I think I have to. Melee attack 10, melee defense 11. Yeah, so they are. we don't want them to get to the walls. That's the dangerous bit. But let's do it. Because if we don't do it now... All that will happen is they'll bring in, well, they'll potentially bring in a third army and make the exchange ratio that much worse. Or the, the needed exchange ratio that much worse. As it stands, we should be okay. We don't have any mortars, which is unfortunate. But as a result, I suppose it still means we do have more infantry than we ordinarily would have inside the fort. No current breaches, which is good. Colonial militia, not you yet. The, the difference in colonial line is 225 and regiment of line is 225. But let's just deploy everyone to man a set of guns at least. Even though these sections that are currently facing the wrong way aren't needed, what generally happens is they then start to get folded in to the centre. And we've got a bunch of infantry left so let's take a few of these units and position them over the walls three units of artillery we've got two units of cavalry plus our general and we've got two units of militia and a colonial line in the center So where are you focusing, eh? Here. Actually, I might take you and you off the walls. Put some colonial militia into the wall, into the... Uh, into the buildings. These are colonial light. They aren't chasseur a cheval. Hmm. Hopefully, we can repel some of their some of their troops before they start massing on the breach. I don't. Th uh, I don't. Where's my the gun I was moving over here. If you stay far, it will off. I can line men like this. Put a militia unit here. Because the trouble is, I can, like with this, I get more firepower lining my men up like this, firing into the breach, than I do making the command HQ fire at will. So really, I do want them to make a breach. There we go. There we go, push them away. I don't really like them trying to push around the rear. It's not the end of the world, because we do have excess. We can fold. These units that are currently sat above the gate can be folded around to cover main sections of the wall. They're also hitting that section of the wall here. 
This is part of the danger with them having the artillery advantage. So I'm going to push a cavalry unit out to try and manoeuvre around all these units to wipe out their artillery line. But this is what we wanted. This is this is better than where we were, and especially these units are now taking up a position on the inside fire steps. So they should fire down into the combat. There we go. My cavalry's out. So we're gonna have to send them out to do some. This unit's protected by a unit of horsemen. There we go. These men firing by rank is more firepower than I'd get from these guys firing out of their building. As cool as it is. When these guys need to start shooting, I'm in desperate, <laughs> desperate times. And lots of these units can then damage infantry units that will want to push around to the gatehouses. Or to push around to the breach. So my infantry needs to do a long, make a long route around at full speed. So these men hopefully won't be too aggressive. So who are they shoot? Who are the gunners shooting at? No one in particular. You men fight the nineteenth. These men advance. Excellent, they're shattered to get my troops up and out of the, the mud. These men are doing okay. A couple of units there. They're holding at range. I think the damage to this wall is from misses from trying to attack here. Yeah, the desert, the camel gunners that have dismounted are aware of what's going on. Get moving. Got another unit of Kizilbashi musketeers getting ready to attack, but looks like we're going to get some shots off at them still, which means we've got a clear run on this 24 pounder artillery. All this over here I'm not as bothered about because it looks like it's not even firing. So all that serves to do, all those guns are serving to do is reduce the amount of men they can get onto the field at once. It's two, two more units routed which is excellent although there's a massive movement There we go, but that's one unit of gunners shattered. Attack the next unit. The camel gunners are aware that something's up. Mass charge. So this regiment of foot. Fire by rank. We have men to kill, sir. Once they've worked it out. Fire! Ceasefire. You men hit the camel gunners. Actually, maybe try hit the general's bodyguard. I don't mind taking losses, but if we kill their general, that will make them much less successful at pushing through the breach, because obviously they've lost their commander. These men on the walls are providing some excellent damage 
onto these units that are trying to push through the breach. The 77th. There we go. This is what I like. These men have no targets to the front really to attack. That's the enemy general knocked out. Push and hit the camel gunners if you can. The infantry, we, the, the reinforcements we have are a uh, infantry. But as you can see, the bulk of the enemy army has been routed. They might come back in good time because some of them haven't lost that many men. But this is good news for us. I think we're firing artillery at those guys at max range, which is good news. So my cavalry came back, so what I'm going to do is run them in front of my walls. General's bodyguard, who have lost their general, are chasing after me. But we can run in, in front of this wall and they'll get shot to bits by musket fire. The 18th are coming back, as are the 17th. Shoot him! Shoot him! So a scene in um, uh, the Pacific when the Japanese soldier comes out of the cave. <laughs> the guy's running around being like, somebody effing shoot him! 17th are going to go down. Yep. See? The advantage of having line infantry makes their morale go down in steps. With every volley. Constant fire from militia makes them go like makes the morale go down like that. So it's nice to have a step decrease, step decrease, step. Good stuff. 18th light horse, get you guys back inside. Let's re let's speed up time a little bit because fundamentally we've just got a whole bunch of men running away. You want to take some shots at the general. Not a single hit. Oh, there you go. The enemy general's been shot off his horse and that's made them decide to try and attack us. Bad decision there. Oh, the reinforcements are coming in from over here and there's a lot of cavalry up front. That's not the best news to have front-loaded cavalry. But it looks like they are going to loiter outside the walls for a good amount of time. There's some more guns entering the field. So the Lancers. We had a look, but they decided against it. We are picking at these guys with long range artillery fire, which is pretty good. Got another infantry charge coming in. Who's this? This time the 33rd. You have to run through... Oh, look at this dead guy he must have fallen off the wall. Oh, they've had enough. 78th had enough. Native Lancers are wavering. That unit of levies routing. Let's take you guys and man that section of the wall. Okay, they might be trying to destroy this section here, which isn't bad because it's still the same corner that we're holding. Yeah, thankfully, we've still got this regiment up here, and they're doing some good damage to the cavalry before they charge in. If we had spikes, that would be perfect. Hello, the levee's back. Let's see how long they stick around for this time. Yeah, these lancers, they're taking damage from the men on the walls, which is perfect. Yeah, they're shat shattered. That was quick. Hopefully these lancers will all suffer the same fate. Because it looks like they do want to charge, but they can't really, they can't quite work it out. And it means that when they do eventually charge, they're going to... Well, those guys are broken. Well, part of me wonders, do they break? Have they broken because they know there's no... 
We can't do anything against the guys on the wall. Okay, we're also after this section of the wall now, but hopefully we should be doing a bit of counter battery. But yeah, we've still got plenty of cavalry to push out and do damage to them if needs be. Although it looks like they don't. They still aren't sure. But they've got mer uh, mercenaries coming in now at least. More, lots more Kizilbashi. Looks like they might all be going to mass over in the far corner. Mer oh, Indian mercenaries are coming in now. Speed up time a little bit, just till they get into the... There we go. Volley by rank. Present. No, they've had enough. <laughs> it's reasonable damage to these men in the in the on on the advance here. You guys can actually you in musket range. Sort of, not really. But yeah, it looks like the AI doesn't really know what to do. Except send more and more men into the breach. <laughs> Look at that, officers first. You brave silly bugger. Nope. <laughs> they routed after losing a handful of men. Okay, this could be interesting. It's a big old block of Indian troops coming in together. So they might be able to achieve something if they don't get whittled away and broken. If they charge in one large push, I mean this regiment up here has almost run out of ammunition. Well, they're about a third of the a third of the way through their ammo. The seventh are going in through the breach. These men here still able to fire. Oh, they're being charged. The officer's been shot down. Shaken, wavering. Broken. Yep. Yeah. And these guys are just, god alive, they're just gonna get chewed up walking in front of our walls. The fifth here has actually lost quite a number of quite a large number of men. If you get some artillery shots in, you could probably make them route. Yeah, the fifth have routed. These two units are in a bit of a better, bit better condition because they haven't had to run past the gauntlet. Although it looks like what's going to happen is they are going to mass over there and then probably not attack me. So then I'll have to see the clock out because it looks like they aren't. I don't know. Okay, so the 18th have done their job. It's time for the 17th to earn their earn their living. It does look like they are going to combine their forces rather than attack. Because these guys have just sat over here in a big lump and not done anything. So let's knock out those 18-pounders. Let's make sure they don't get any free breaches. But yeah, if that's what they decide they're going to do, then I'll probably just cut the recording and bring you guys back at the end of the action, because I'm not going to sally. As long as their guns aren't firing, I don't really care what they're doing. But they can sit over there if they like. We've got some sporadic artillery fire hitting them at distance anyway, so it's not as if they're not going to take any damage from sitting there. The 17th light horse are in. Got to be keep an eye out and know when they when they route that when the reinforcements pop up like that. Get out of there! Fortunately, because they aren't actually on the map yet, we should be able to escape. Okay, 
Can you guys actually just cease fire? Let them walk past you. I'll need the ammo on the walls when they've got a... when they, If they try and attack. And that is if they try and attack. Well, I don't know, I've got plenty of troops. I'll say someone's trying to attack. Got a unit of levy coming in, but first of all, I do want to make sure I get my 17th light horse inside. Sixty-seventh are chasing them for now. Alright, you men just open up. into the back of the 63rd in preference. Interesting choice. I wonder if they still fire the, fire the cannons when they run out of ammo. Hmm. Curious. Yeah, those guys are going to fall back to the, the grand plan because my cavalry is now inside. Because they've gone over there, realised over here is not quite as fun as they thought it was. Now they're all coming back. Okay, so you've got more ammo than they do. Oh, great shot. They're shattered, that two fangy unit. This unit, 43rd unit of mercenaries, is actually in good shape. How long it will remain so is up to debate. Yeah, they've now started taking fire from the wall. If you could shatter them, that'd be perfect. So the fourth are coming in. 63rd are idle. That unit of levy or I thought idle. Those guns are still dropping shells at max range. Yeah, that unit's also been repelled. The fourth. Okay, they're out of ammo. So I can take you guys and just run you back to safety. I can take this unit of infantry here that still has ammo, they just aren't at full strength and get them up on the wall. The fourth are incoming once more. But they still aren't happy about... Okay, you guys... Nah, you're okay. No, the fourth have been pushed back. Good, you're actually doing some real good damage here. Artillery are routing. They're wavering. They were wavering. Keep keep on picking at them, because it seems to be working. The seventh Order are the next on the chopping block. I mean, think how many men they've lost in this attack. The eleventh regiment are ready to open up. Because they've got plenty of ammunition, there's just only 150 of them. That's still a good amount of muskets. Pour a volley into the back of the 7th. I mean, what you would do if you're truly conserving ammunition is, like, cease fire now, because there's no one in range to shoot, but I don't... I'm not that bothered about keeping my ammunition um, up to scratch, because to be honest, we've still got loads of it across the board. I can do a bit of management shuffle a few units around, it's not a problem. So you're hitting that unit of levy. That musketeer unit's getting picked at by sporadic artillery fire. Fourth are coming back. I mean, you guys just keep... Just keep firing. That's going to be a good hit. Oh no, sure. Oh, I didn't even bounce.
So look at all these troops over here, massed. Part of me wonders. They don't want to send them all in together, because they know that they will just get routed en masse. So the way they go about trying to protect themselves is to actually send them in one unit at a time, because that's supposedly the right decision. Another, another good volley we'll see off the 7th. Okay, what I'm going to do is, you guys have got the measure of this battle now, it's going to be more of the same, so I'm going to chop the recording here and bring you guys back um, towards the end of the action. Uh, the 67th are advancing in, but they've been pushed back, and if they keep advancing in penny packets like this... I mean, I know you guys love a good slaughter, but this is this is just a, a bit silly, because they're not even <laughs> getting, to the, uh, getting to the actual courtyard anymore. Actually, these guys might make it, the 24th. Oh no, they're gonna go up the up the rappel lines. They're gonna wheel around the they're gonna yeah, the world's slowest wheel into range of this regiment of foot, who is just gonna have there you go. They've all reorged. Come on, take your positions. I want to put a volley into the 24th. Yep. <laughs> oh, actually... No, they've, they've done something. All their infantry that was back here is now pushing up against us. Okay, let's fend off this last infantry attack and then we'll call it. The 24th have been routed. So this infantry, get them out of the way. Get this militia unit up on the wall. It's not entirely necessary, but why the hell not? Ah, okay, so as usual, when there's men on the walls, it kind of blurs the fire at will logic. Because these guys want to fire by rank into the men that have repelled up. Actually, I want them... Come on. Are you guys going to come through the centre or are you going to charge around and hit that regiment of foot? I think you're going to charge around and hit that regiment of foot, aren't you? Yeah, you are. I mean, I think we all know what's going to happen here. Ooh, okay. Col Colonial line, get out of the way. Charge the infantry. The trouble is, lots of these men are, that are down here are going to get engaged by all of these troops in the centre. Yeah, they've already routed as well. Fifty six are back. Try to get the, col the uh, colonial infantry on the wall. See where these guys go, or they're going to get shot down outside of the gate. Fundamentally, I think that's what they're going to do. They didn't watch out; they're going to get a volley of militia fire, and, I, and I, know, I know they might be thinking, "Oh, they're only militia." Yeah, but there's a crap ton of them. They might not even stand for that long. Nope, they didn't. Okay, right, so all that's left is that clump of units over there, and I'm not going to push out, so what I'm going to do is chop recording and bring you guys back at the uh, the end of the action. It won't be long, so see you in a second, everyone. <laughs> it only took a few minutes, and the concentrated artillery fire from the walls managed to make all these guys break. So victory is ours. So let's see the amount of losses incurred by the Persians. Oh, that was only 4,000 men. Back you go. And we still need to reinforce, but fundamentally, just churn out as many men as we can in Baghdad, and then we can uh, use that to uh, use that as a springboard to push and bring more force against the 
Persians, so you men replenish. 225 men in the artillery unit? I don't think so. Keep building men just to sit outside the gates. Help is on the way. Well, Bernardino Chavez pushed down into the region. The army that sat into in, that hopped into Istanbul is not meant to stay there. They are going to drive down here. It's going to take them a few turns to get there because of infrastructure, no doubt, in later regions. Let's, so there's lots of raids on the Russian front, as we'd expect. Moscow can stand to get some replenishment. The university's been destroyed. That's why the, the, the uh, inhabitants are happy. Let's build an upgrade into a church school. Oh, there's a lot of good industry here. Let's build walls as well, just because we can. Let's take our agent and push on, push him onto Kazan. You can hold on for four turns with a reasonable garrison. I mean, the gar Kiev may fall to the Russians there. But we do have help on the way. So I'm going to do a bit of round of Upgrading some of this infantry. Mr. Demacado is. He's got the way of it. Vito Sanchez. Ooh, you guys make a beeline for Kiev. You will be there not very long. Jamie de, de Azara advance up into supporting position. Mr. Cuesta, you did have an order to push on to Riga, but Riga's under siege, so what we're going to do is use you to drive through this gap here in Central Europe. Let's not spend too much money. Mr. Cuesta, are oh, you out of range? You are out of range. But we can take Marcio Campos. He can push out of the town, drive into... Denise Spasinieva? Oh, that's not a... Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not an army that's worth fighting. Slovao is still happy with our rule. But Marcio Campos... Drive east. You men are going to go here to try and trap that force between Minsk and the south. Mr. Cuesta... Give you an order to push on. Just beeline straight for Cherkask. Christian Morales push for straight line push towards Astrakhan. God, we've got a lot of upgrades we could do here. Can Mr. Cervante leave Dresden? Not yet. Can you leave Stuttgart, Mr. Capitello? You can, good. So then you can also advance to the south. Let's get our priest into an army. So. If we land and hit Nerun, we can then start to push against Zahid in, in Kabul. But we probably want to keep periodically reinforcing it with more troops. Yerevan upgrade. Don't want to build walls yet. I could push and take Tbilisi, but I don't want to leave Yerevan open to attack from the Persians there. Okay, so I think we want to take Mr. Galve, hit Vilnius. Let's maintain our offensive on the Russian front line. We need to use the cash we've got to rebuild these cities as we take them, do a bit of incremental backfilling of our economy and then maintain the overall, maintain the advance to keep pressure on as many fronts as possible. We're going to take this, then we're going to take Riga, push on, take St. Petersburg. Just maintain sheer bloody momentum. So, let's see if that's... It's not a bad artillery position. The key is, can I get all of it up here? We 
can get most of it. So let's create a right wing and then create a left wing to try and surround the town. My gunners are in position, my howitzers open up, my cavalry position on the flanks to provide that support. My general observe from oh Nadges. There we go, get you back. Redeploy you. Okay, I think that was every it's curiosity a guard that needs to deploy again. General, hunker down. Oh wow, they've actually deployed right up in front of us. Ideally I should have targeted my howitzers onto other units rather than focusing on their horse artillery. <laughs> to be honest all of our stuff should be focusing on other units not their horse artillery. General's bodyguard's going to leave himself exposed. Let's go get him. These flanking units can advance. Keep bombarding the center mass of their force. These men push up to the higher ground. These men advance because they're gonna they've got a beautiful firing position to the flank of their army. The Dragoons are coming over to help the General, but it's going to be a bit late. I'm going to commit my Regiment of Horse. Go on, break. There you go. Enemy General has been killed. And there we go. Push on into the Dragoons that are remaining. That's a fantastic quick climb hit. Bring my cavalry in. The 38th Regiment is going to get absolutely chewed up by the 71st and the 79th Regiments. Yep. I think that quick climb is what broke them. So you men hit the Marines, you men hit that for the 11th Foot Guard. We don't need all this cavalry to hit a Dragoon unit, but the sooner we knock it out the better. Get my heavy cavalry in against the militia to the rear. Pivot you guys to fire into the flank of the 23rd. The irregulars have been pushed back. Cavalry push around the flank. These units are going to annihilate this unit of provincial line. Once they reloaded, of course. So then you men deploy like so to straighten up the line and improve your firing arcs. Maintain your offensive on the flank. Cavalry is doing a great job against the militia. Curiosity Guard take out the line infantry. Yeah, I think this army is not long for this world. Everyone's breaking in good order. Twenty-second foot guards are going to go down. I mean, they're being fired upon from so many directions. I mean, they're a bit st they're sturdier. Let's not let's give them some credit. They are foot guard units. Uh, a bit of a terrain issue here as well. That's why you part of the reason why you may last longer than you should. But it looks like the only unit left is this unit of marines, which is fighting my royal cuirassier guard. Yes, there they go. So let's bring an infantry unit down to charge them. Everyone else just cease fire. Come on, the advance of the 78th. Ooh. 
Inspired by nearby unit. Damn right you are. These are raw Cressier Guard. Oh, they're wavering. Well, when the infantry get in, they'll make their decision. Double-headed eagle will not save you here, my friends. There you go. They've sounded the retreat. Fools. Fools. There we go. <laughs> they fell really quickly. There we go, though. It's another major territory on the Russian frontier secured. Spend some good money on repairs across the board. Don't worry about fortifications. And then you, Arturo Cruz, push and take out the garrison of Riga. These guys have lots of Simon, two units of Simonyevsky foot guards. Simonovsky. Simonovsky, not Simonyevsky. Simonovsky, foot guard. Light artillery. Good cavalry contingent. But now we've got pikes just for that sort of job. So let's attack Riga. They have fortifications, but we have artillery, so I do not foresee too many shocks on the horizon. But let's see. We're going to get our pikes into the breach, hopefully cut their way through the enemy cavalry, and then we shall be home and dry. But first of all, we have to blow away in. We are gonna we are gonna make get our way in as well. So going through the breach, two units of pikes plus three units of infantry, one each plus one wherever we look either weakest or strongest, depending on how the situation looks. Take the bulk of our line plus two units of Swiss regiment plus Swiss grenadiers. They're gonna deploy to try and attack the rear of the fort. They're going to have the cavalry with them too. Okay, so I want to pick my artillery, switch to quick line, start a battle, because you know all that cavalry they've got? Do you know where it'll be? Boop! <laughs> oh, they're going to start running. They're running somehow. The Mione Streltsy have moved, but the horse, the Garda Cheval are here, and the household cavalry is here. <laughs> Although, I do not like the fact that they have just destroyed. Oh no, they haven't destroyed any of my guns. They're all still good. It's got 1st Grenadier Regiment covering the wall. Garrison Militia, Garrison Militia. There's the Foot Guard Unit, which I think do just look splendid. Line infantry, militia, guerrilla mercenaries. Yeah, they got a foot guard unit protecting the rear. Yeah, they these guys look fantastic, I think. Let's increase the t the rate time passes because we do just need to make a way in. I'm gonna let them fire one more volley of quick climb in the centre, then I'm gonna stop it. Attack. Where's the foot guard unit that's on the front? Militia. Line. Militia. Mercenaries. Militia. Militia. Garrison line. There we go. So they're still firing at us. But we are going to make our way in. And when the way is open, we will advance. I want one pike unit to defend this breach. A pike unit to defend the gatehouse. See, there might be a bit of collateral damage in the centre, but nothing that's going to make it to 55th Regiment. Yeah, they're taking losses, because they are all bunched together and not spread out. But we're 74% of the way towards making our breach. So, let's take our pikemen and begin the advance. Take our formation of infantry. Get them here and get our assault divisions make them run 
One cavalry is going to be up, ready on the right. One cavalry is going to be ready on the left. To be honest, if they're running, everyone else needs to run too. Artillery, so you don't have. No, so you have some purpose. Attack that bastion on the side. So quick climb unit hit the garrison line. The other unit hit the foot guards. Let's have another look at our Swiss regiment, which look absolutely fantastic in their blue coats with right white cross belts and red trim. They look good, but I always got a soft spot in my heart for the Swiss grenadiers. The combination of red, white, and blue just looks great. It just looks really good. Yes, I'm going to deploy my... I might actually get my artillery to focus on the the other section of the wall. I doubt we will actually be able to trap anyone, but it's worth a shot. No, no, they've all just ignored me. And they're firing at the centre anyway. It's not bad. It's not a bad outcome. So my Swiss regiment, cover the gate. You men scale the wall. You men scale. These two units cover the rear gate. Artillery switched to round shot. Engage the enemy concentration to the rear. Actually, no. Focus on this breach as well. The Swiss pikes. Their job is to act as a bit of a tempting target. But let's also try and see if we can cause them some issues by attacking the additional breach. So you've got a weak unit of line infantry. There's another garrison line infantry unit. So you've got a foot guard unit that's in a dangerous position. Yeah, if you run into position, then deploy into square. You deploy into square. Hold off the Vibione Streltsy. These men have very much been sent to die. So much so I might just move them across. Get them in the breach or over towards the breach. They're much more valuable there. My pikemen, they're making a breach. They're gaining ground. Some grenadiers are down here. So we need to surround the Swiss Guard. Grenadiers get in there, attack the men in the centre. You may also find a way up, because we need to swamp these foot guards. Regiment of Militia is here, so you push forward and attack them. Bring in Mr. Cruz. Artillery's landing in the centre. There we go. So now they're upset at what's happening. Form square again, because you've got Union of Dragoons coming at you. Now we're attacking these men here. You guys are starting you guys are gonna capture the gate, which will be good news. The foot guards are still I mean they're holding off admirably, which is why we need to swamp them. Pikemen are making good progress. The 
So it's the 35th and the Union of Irregulars. Get these men through the gate while it's still open. We might even be able to capture the gate with this unit. In which case you men charge the horse artillery. Keep forcing our way in. You men are going to swing across. I mean, this battle up here is not great news. I'd like to secure the gate and then get these men back west. The artillery has leveled that building. Okay, there's no point holding this gatehouse anymore. One of our infantry units is routing. We're attacking the horse artillery. Our pikemen are still... They are making good progress into the fort. Let's try and just run a unit of pikemen through their line. Plus, we do have these three infantry units. They're currently uncommitted. So these Russians are surrounded. But we are running out of men pushing up the wall to attack them. Oh, that's the units routing. Yeah, understandable. Let's stop all our artillery fires. It might be causing us some problems with the Swiss regiment. Swiss Grenadiers attack the last regiment, the Chaval. Line Infantry Guards push through. You men are going to knock out the last of the horse artillerymen. Hey, they actually killed one of my guys. You men get in here and form, form a gun line. These Swiss, engine, Swiss <laughs> grenadiers also get in here, blow this regiment of horse, regiment of horse apart. Let's try to see if we can get a unit of pikes out to attack them first. Grenadier guards are going down. The Simonovsky foot guards are wavering. Got a unit of militia that's wavering. Charge you men into the square. The grenadiers should be enough to hold it. The pikemen will be able, these pikemen will be able to win. There's only 91 garrison lion plus 3 line infantry holding. Now we've got pikemen in here. That regiment of horse has just been gutted down to one man so let's get the pikemen back over there you men form a guard position oh, some of the grenadiers are actually stuck in the wall you can see them poor souls now they're starting to break Attack the last guardsman. He's making a valiant stand, but it is foolish. Go on, Swiss. Swiss infantry. There's one horse artilleryman. I think they're probably bugged, so let's just ignore him. Turn around and attack the foot guards. New men all attack. The last infantry unit holding the gate. With our artillery. Let's try and make a second entrance. Thankfully, I don't think it's going to change things. You men are all fighting the last foot guard unit. Again, they're holding off brilliantly, but it will not be enough. 
Huzzah and hurrah, victory for the Spanish Empire in 13 seconds. I think that's all they can really do to influence the battle. My guns is hit down a second breach, potentially damage the militia, not much more. There's 10 remaining infantrymen fighting, now it's 7. But the gate is ours, the city is ours. And we are another step forward on the road to victory. Good stuff. So I think this turn I'm probably going to also launch my invasion of India. So you men upgrade your infrastructure, repair the army, or replenish the army, upgrade the mansion. Get some upgrades across the board. Oop. Let's just actually spend a bit of time doing some upgrades. You're going to push forward to St. Petersburg. God, we've got a lot of stuff to build. Okay, so we've got two armies here ready to rock and roll. So let's take my militia force out. Let's take new men out. Let's get people embarked. Get the agent embarked. So we need to keep an eye out on what we... We can't let these guys get abandoned because they're only on a single fifth rate. So it's a bit risky. But you've got to, all, you've got, all you've got to do, quote unquote, is to make sure you don't leave them. Leave them alone. Which part of the th what, which what I'm going to do is I'm going to end the episode before I hit end turn. So during the next end turn phase, we will see a fleet's arrived order or notification. That way I will not forget. There we go. Three armies ready to push into India. Good stuff. That's all the cash we've got left to spend. You've all moved. You fought valiantly. You're not going to push out of the town. Can you guys leave Vilnius? Not really. We can repair that building. Get you guys back into Vilnius. Spy you. Head up to Archangelsk. There we go. I mean, you could amphibiously attack Finland, but I might just send these militia down just to see what's going on. Moscow secured. Everywhere, you know, things are going rather well. But yeah, like I said, I'm going to hit. End, I'm going to end the episode here. So I hit end turn next turn, and then we see my hopefully see my ships um, arrive on station. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed, and I'm just going to upgrade that farm. <laughs> and I'll see you next time for the continued adventures of the eastern front of our Spanish Empire and the beginning, hopefully, of our Indian invasion. Cheers, everyone.